Hey guys, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel and here I am with my favorite video to film, my currently inked video and this is my video for the month of June. So sit back, relax and let's get started. So I just wanted to show you guys the update from last month. So here are the pens that I had inked up from last month and I did have five and it actually worked out really well for me in terms of just having these five inked up. I don't journal or write as much as a lot of other people do. So this was basically the perfect amount for me and I just wanted to work out and see what's the maximum number of pens that I can have inked up without running out necessarily um, but I do want to just take you through how each of these pens worked out for me so just taking out the ink journal that I had from last month and showing you which inks I had paired with each of these pens so the first one was the Estherbrook JR Fantasia with an extra fine nib and this was paired with Robert Oster Bondi blue let me just zoom in here and I loved the combination of this pen with this ink when I first got this pen it just felt a little bit scratchy and toothy and I didn't really like it but after some work Work and actually pairing it with this ink I found that it was such a great combination I loved the way that it wrote I loved the the how smooth this nib was with this ink absolutely loved it I thought it was a really really great combination and I'm glad that I decided to give this pen another chance because I really really did like using it the next one that I have is my Sailor Pro Gear Slim, and this one is paired with Robert Oster Avocado. And I don't normally pair my inks and uh, pens in terms of matching the color, uh, but I did with the last two. And I really like this green color. I liked the flow of it. Beautiful. The next one is my Pilot Vanishing Point Decimo with a fine nib, and I paired it with Pilot Eroshizuku Murasaki Shikibu. I love this purple. I don't know what it is about this purple, but I love this purple and I feel like I need to buy a full bottle of this soon. The next one I have is my Pilot Kakuno with a fine nib and I had this with Pilot Eroshizuku Yamabuto. I liked this ink, but I don't know if I need a full bottle of it because in some cases it felt like it wrote more red, others it felt more magenta. I'm still kind of undecided on how I feel about this particular ink. Flow is beautiful though, absolutely beautiful. I can't argue that, but I'm just not sure whether or not I want to purchase a full bottle of this ink. Still undecided. The next one is my Lamy All Star with an extra fine nib and I had Robert Oster Chartreuse. This was probably my least favorite pairing out of all of them because I found that when I wrote with it, it wrote really light that I couldn't see what I was writing and then it dried darker, but it made my Lamy All Star feel like a dry writer and it wasn't. So maybe try this again with a try this ink with a different pen and see how it works. I don't know, but it wasn't my favorite combination um, at all out of the ones that I had this month. And then um, lastly, I had the Pelican 140 with an extra fine nib and I had to ink it up because it was a new pen and plus it was so pretty. And who doesn't want to play with that flex nib? Oh, but it is inked up for the month of June. So let's move on. Now I have here my two ink journals, my Hobonichi A6 notebook with a Tomo River paper, which I really love doing samples in, as well as my Midori. Um, I like doing the samples in both to compare how the ink and the pen look in both combinations. Now I know I have six pens inked here and I only have a five pen case. The reason that I bought this was because I wanted to keep it to only five pens inked and obviously I did not. Huh. Oh well. So the first pen and ink combination for June is my Cross Botanica Green Daylily, and this was a pen that my dad gave me years ago, and I am pairing it with Herbon Poussière de Lune. This is a sample that I got from Goulet Pens, and it was recommended to me by my friend Adrian. I like putting Herbon inks in my Cross Botanica because this writes very, very wet, and I found some Herbon inks quite dry. So once again, I'm gonna just draw a little square squat, squatch, swatch here, and it is for the Cross Botanica Green Daylily, and this has a fine nib in it, which I only discovered, I think, 
last month or two months ago that it was a, a fine nib. And already I'm liking the color of this purple. It definitely is different from Murasaki Shikibu, but I like the almost warmer tone of this purple and I'm looking forward to being able to use it. Then now writing on the Timo River paper, I like being able to compare the two because you can already see a little bit of a difference. I feel like the purple shines brighter on the Timo River paper versus the Midori paper. And comparing the two, I, I really like seeing that. Now I mostly use Timo River paper in my everyday writing. So my planner is a Hobonichi with Timo River paper. My A6 journal is with Timo River paper. So this is a paper that I use mostly on a day-to-day -day basis, but I still like seeing everything in a Midori just to see what the different effects are. So I'm just drawing a little ink drop here and I know everybody does something different when it comes to their swatches. You like to do the swirls or the lines up and down just to see the effect of the ink. So that is my Cross Botanica Green Day Lily with her Bomb Poussière de Lune. The next ink that I have, or sorry, the next pen that I have is my newest acquisition, my Twisby Diamond 580 in the Smoke Rose Gold, and I have it inked up with Robert Oster Rose Gold Antica. And this was actually a direct recommendation from uh, Drew on Goulet Pens when he was testing out all of the rose gold pens from Twisby and he thought this one would be a perfect match. I uh, actually had to refill it and because the shimmer as you see me is shaking there it's the shimmer didn't actually go into the pen like I wanted it to so I had to refill it after shaking up the sample. So then putting a square swatch down and already seeing the shimmer in there. I haven't used a shimmer ink in my pens in quite a while and I just wanted to make sure that I got all the shimmer and the shimmer in here is like a bronze and it is absolutely beautiful. I have been afraid to use shimmer inks recently because I'm afraid of them clogging up my pen but so far this is working really well in my Twisby Smoke Rose Gold with a fine nib. I am leaning more towards fine or I haven't tried any medium nibs yet, but I am leaning more towards the slightly broader nibs rather than just extra fine or fine because I like seeing the shimmer, I like seeing the shading, and also I'm, I'm finding that the general experience with slightly broader nibs is going to be a lot smoother. Already loving seeing the shimmer on the Timo River paper and I feel like it just writes more smooth or smoother on the Timo River paper. So once again this is the Twisby Diamond 580 in Smoke Rose Gold with a fine nib with Robert Oster Rose Gold Antica. Next pen I have inked up is my Pelican M400 in the White Tortoise and I love this pen love love this pen and i chose robert oster gold antica to go with it and i feel like it is a perfect perfect match i feel like this is very robert oster heavy this pen this particular sample i got from pen chalet and i do have a discount code in the description for your first order you can get ten dollars off using my referral code for pen chalet and their customer service is fantastic but i also love that their samples are four mils and not just two mils so going ahead here and writing out my swatch for my Pelican M400. I love the color of this pen. I love that this is a piston fill pen. So you get a ton of ink volume in here. And look at how beautiful that that gold is going down. So my Pelican M400, and this is an extra fine nib. Pelican nibs usually run quite a bit broader than even just regular western nibs so this extra fine feels more like a western fine almost medium i would say but i really like it because of how wet this is some people don't like how broad an extra fine is but i actually really really love it and i'm finding like i've said before that i really enjoy a slightly broader nib because of the fact that I can see so many different shading properties but also the the experience the writing experience overall is just that much smoother and I find ooh, do you see the shimmer 
on the Robert Oster Rose Gold Antica, so pretty. But I do find writing on Tamo River paper, especially with the Pelican nibs, just such a smooth, smooth experience. And I'm so glad that I made the jump to be able to purchase this Pelican. It is one of the, it is the most expensive currently in my collection. Um, give me a couple weeks there may be a new pen being added to the collection and I will do a new pen collection video probably in a few weeks time oh I'm excited for that but again this is the Pelican M400 white tortoise with an extra fine nib currently inked up with Robert Oster gold antica The next pen I have currently inked up is the Pelican 140, and this is my first and only vintage pen. Um, I just cleaned it out recently, actually, with an extra pen flush and pen cleaner, as recommended by my friend CD, and I feel like it's just improved the functionality of the pen tenfold. Before, oh, I'll just show you here. I'm inked, I've inked it up, continued to ink it up with Roar and Klingner Alt Gold Groon. I didn't change the ink from what I had last month because I want to actually use this in my five year journal. And you get so much ink for such a good price. But basically, I had just, um, when I first got it, I just flushed it out with water and then filled it with ink. But noticed I was getting a lot of. Um, nib creep with blue ink and I'm like I hadn't filled it with blue ink so why was where was the blue ink coming from so I did a proper clean with some pen cleaner or a little bit of pen flush and soak the nib for a while and even the pen cap had blue ink residue left over in it and after cleaning that out with that proper pen cleaner you can see here the flex on this nib has just improved like oh my goodness it felt like the the nib was a bit stiff but then after actually cleaning it properly it feels like it's flexing the way it should be I'm so happy with it so excited and you can see in the downstrokes it feels just that much easier to be able to get that flex and then the thin line going across love this pen so so much so so much so i'm going to go ahead and finish my swatching here on the tomo river paper and again even if i'm not flexing it it is a, a smooth writer so this is a 14 karat extra fine nib and this vintage pen it does um there is that balance like i said to that pen and it's not made as a flex pen but it does have that flex in it and i absolutely love it and it is also a very wet writer so it feels a little bit more broad than even my Pelican M400. So I'll be, it'll be interesting for me to be able to use it in my five-year journal and see how I like writing with it on a day-to-day -day basis. But I mean, just flexing it is just so fun. Like, let's just do it again. Oh, love the flex. Loving the flexing. Ugh. So once again, my Pelican 140 with Roarer and Klingner Alt Gold Groon. Next pen I have is my Sailor Pro Gear in White Rose Gold, and I have it inked with Sailor Yurameku Itazora. I'm probably going to say that wrong how many times, but I've sampled all of the Yurameku inks recently, and I just love the chromo shading in these, so I had to use it this month in at least one of my pens. The thing that I was a little bit scared of when using this ink was since most of my pens are fine or extra fine that the ink would be too dry or it wouldn't show off the shading properties this is why i chose my sailor pro gear because it has a 21 karat medium fine nib and i find it's actually wetter and slightly softer or bouncier than the 14 karat nib on my sailor pro gear slim so i was really I thought, you know what, if I'm going to use a Yurameku ink, I'm going to use a Sailor pen with it. And you can already see some of the shading and just that square that I've put down. It's like this light blue with purple, really, really beautiful color. And even in the writing itself, you can see a little bit of that shading in there. So I'm really glad that I chose this pen and ink pairing. And I'm looking forward to seeing how that's going to look in my journals and in my planners on a day-to-day -day basis.
So the last pen that I have inked up here is my Pilot Vanishing Point in the Gunmetal Gray, and I currently have it inked up with Pilot Iroshizuku Fuyu Shogun. This is a, I don't want to say a weird gray, but it's like a gray, blue, purple, and I wanted to test out the, the Pilot inks more. Basically, except for the uh, Rohr and Klingner Alt Gold Grun, all of these are from samples because I really do want to make use of what I have. And I love Pilot Oroshuziku inks in general anyway, but this particular gray compared to like, if you look at it in relation to the other ink swatches that I have, it almost looks purple, like a grayish purple. And I'll be really interested to see how I can incorporate this into my journaling or in my planning. I have an idea for what stickers may go with this particular color, but I just, I'm, just excited overall to be able to be trying different inks and different pen combinations with the paper. But like I said, Pilot Oroshizuku, such a dependable brand and you can't ever go wrong with any of their inks. Just so, so pretty. I do have to say though, on the Midori paper, my the, the pen and ink does feel a little bit drier and I don't want to say scratchier, but toothier at least. Whereas on the Tomo River paper, it just feels so smooth. Every single one of these combinations just feels so smooth and I'm looking forward to, be able, to being able to use them this month. So once again, that is my Pilot Vanishing Point with a fine nib with Pilot Iroshizuku Fuyu Shogun. So there are all of my pens and inks for the month of June 2022. I love being able to see them in the Midori as well as the Tomo River paper, but look at the shimmer on that rose gold Antica. Like that's beautiful. And I'm looking forward to getting into shimmerings again. But the, the Itazora, look at the shading on that already. And then the Fuyu Shogun is just so interesting. So, so excited. So let me know what you guys are inking up and whether you know, are, are there specific combinations that you like to go for? Are there certain colors that you like to go for depending on what time of year it is? Um, or do you like to match your pen with your ink type of thing? Just let me know in the comments below. I love hearing what you guys are inking up, love hearing your preferences. And if you guys have any recommendations for me, please let me know down below. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Have yourselves a great day. Thank you.